Greetings. Hail the Black Light. Get right into this. Now, yesterday was uh, Thursday the 13th. Today is Friday the 14th. You know, I'm quite sure I'm right. But anyway, we were talking about establishing jurisdiction. Now, <clears throat> this is on democracy. Now I'm going to play some portions of what's going on. Now, this is, this is Talib. She's a, a politician. This sister over here is a lawyer. They're going to introduce themselves to you. But they're talking about how they season homes and how they doing the brothers and sisters up here in Michigan, in Detroit. Now, this is exactly what I'm talking about with martial law. They can do so anything they want to with martial law. The Constitution has been compromised. Everything is a fraud. When the Federal Reserve took control of Congress and took all the gold and silver, these people right here, they, they're, they're, they're not working. They're telling you what's happening. A smart man, wise man can figure it out for itself. But they're what you call like a gatekeeper for the system. Lawyers are foreign entities. Anyway, so actually they're the enemy. They're going to tie this up in litigations. And meanwhile, while they're doing it, more people's houses are going to get shut down. And took it away from them. And, and well, I'm going to comment after this. I'm going to let them, them uh, uh, give you an overview of what we're really talking about. And you got to know that you got to come together in unity. And you got to do this yourself. We'll talk more about it. Where a showdown between grassroots activists and the city is shining a spotlight on racist housing policies that robbed African Americans in Detroit of their homes and widened the wealth gap. On Thursday, with the support of Democratic Representative Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, the Coalition for a Property Tax Justice announced a class action lawsuit against the city of Detroit, Wayne County, and the state of Michigan in response to unfair property tax foreclosures. One in four Detroit properties have been subject to property tax foreclosure, a uh, level comparable only to the foreclosure rates during the Great Depression. And according to legal experts, many of them were e caused by illegally inflated property taxes that violated the state's own constitution. Even though Detroit tried to fix the problem in 2017, it's still overvaluing the lowest priced homes. This is lifelong Detroit resident Sanja Bonet speaking during a press conference on Thursday. In 2015, her home was illegally foreclosed by Wayne County, which includes the city of Detroit. Right now, when I tell the community every time I go out, it feels very personal to lose your home. You feel like you did something very wrong, like you just couldn't keep it together. But once I was informed by Professor Atuahene that the city illegally and unconstitutionally took my home, I was lit a fire. And we began fighting. And this is where this fight has brought us. So I want to leave you with a couple of things today. Number one, this is an 85% black city. This would not be happening if this city was 85% white. You better believe that. But two is, land is so very important. And they are stealing your land. We cannot let them get away with this yet again, because Lord knows they've stolen enough land. Detroit is now 80% African American, and 40% of Detroit's residents live below the federal poverty level. 
But as downtown Detroit becomes increasingly gentrified, thousands of Detroit's longtime residents, mostly African American families, have lost their homes to foreclosure for property taxes they should not have been paying in the first place because the poverty tax exemption excuses those in poverty from paying. Well, for more, we go to Detroit, Michigan, where we're joined by Democratic Congress member Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, who's worked on this lawsuit from before the time she entered Congress, and we're joined by Bernadette Atuahene, a professor at uh, Chicago Kent College of Law and research professor at the American Bar Foundation, member of the Coalition for Property Tax Justice. She's most recent study is titled Predatory Cities, forthcoming in the UC Berkeley Law Review later this month. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Congressmember Tlaib, you went back to Detroit for this major news conference. Talk about why this is so critical in your town, in your city of Detroit. You know, I represent the third poorest congressional district in the country out of 435 congressional seats in the nation. And the human impact of what um, it feels like to not be offered the same equal rights that the majority of other Michiganders were getting, I mean, the due process of being able to get noticed, to be able to have the right to appeal, but also the right to have your home assessed every year as required by not only the city charter but the Michigan State Constitution. So many of my residents uh, before I ever got elected were coming to the Sugar Law Center for Economic and Social Justice saying something's not right here. I don't know why did I get this after the deadline. What is happening here? And when we filed the FOIA we found out 260,000 Detroiters uh, received uh, the uh, notice either late uh, or uh, even past the deadline, and, and it was devastating. The fact that they didn't even get the right to appeal it. And what we hear from the city administration and those folks that are in power to make the change is, well, it's their fault. They didn't do anything about it, but you didn't give them the option to do anything about it. So that's why I'm really commending the coalition and what we call the Detroit's professor over here, uh, Bernadette, um, for pushing forward and speaking truth. I think that's what's been really hard. You heard from a mother recently of seven children, and she's, she felt like she did something wrong. And when she finally felt, you know, heard the data, heard that she was actually cheated out of her home, um, it felt liberating in some sense that she, did, she wasn't the one that was in the wrong. Uh, she shouldn't feel ashamed. The city of Detroit and those in power should feel ashamed. And uh, Congresswoman, I'd like to ask you, in terms of the, um, how this crisis is affecting not, on, not just Detroit, but uh, across the nation, uh, in, in terms of the wealth, of, especially of African Americans and Latinos, uh, because of their, the seizures of their homes. Or, and, uh, and See, if it's affecting all across the country, just black and brown people, black people the brown people, and the red man, because he was pushed off his land, need to unite. So when I say black unity is necessary, black unity is, uh, black unity matters, then, then we got to uh, organize ourselves on a grassroots level in the neighborhoods. Because it's supposed to be democracy. A democracy. What do that mean? The majority rules. It also said when the government in the in the so called Constitution, Bill of Rights and uh, other documents that the founders of this corrupt system put together, it says that if a government is not right, you have the, the right to abolish it. I'm going to look that up. You know, and see, can I get that in writing on YouTube? Because I tried to find it. I couldn't find it. But I'm going to keep searching. So, establishing jurisdiction. I told you yesterday, jurisdiction is related to justice. Justice means righteousness. And when you work for Congress, Congress is corrupt on all levels. Trump is telling you, the news is telling you, see the news, 
putting it right there in front of your face. Because they know y'all ain't going to do it. Y'all going to sit back and wait for somebody like them to uh, do something for you. See, black, black man and black woman ain't got no business paying no kind of taxes. And the taxes that we pay don't go to, don't go to helping us. She's going to talk about that because we're going to continue this. Uh, if not later on today, uh, maybe tomorrow. We're going to keep talking about this till, the, till you can get it through your thick skulls. That you got to unite, quit running around here having debates with one another because that ain't going to do no good. Gangs got to stop killing one another, you know. That ain't going to help, help the situation. As a matter of fact, it's going to make it worse. It's going to give them more of a reason to put you in concentration camps because they're running out of spaces. They can't build jails fast enough. And then you got your brothers and uh, your rich brothers and sisters on the side of the enemy, or the side, on, the side of, on the side of the monsters, the blue bloods, the dragon people. They ain't nothing but devils like Donald Elijah Muhammad tried to tell you. This Savior's Day right here is very important. I mean, I'm talking about to all you brothers and sisters that follow Donald Elijah Muhammad. Y'all going to have to come together, man. We're going to have to have a head, a body, hands, arms, legs, feet, you know. A mind to control the body. You know what I'm trying to get you out of see. So we're gonna come back. Stay tuned. This is Black Light.